Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, thank you for joining me today on my Hello Self podcast. I am Patricia Leonard, your host. And this is the podcast where we're focused on helping you get the inspiration and the motivation to turn your cans into cans and dreams into plans. And I have a guest today that has turned her cans into cans, if she ever had any, but she has made plans and done everything she said she was going to do. And there's still more to come. So I just like for you, um, my guest to say hello to our uh, listeners today. And then I'd like to introduce Rainy Levy to you right now. Say hello, Rainy, uh, Rainy, and then I'll give them some more information about you. Hi, Patricia. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm a big fan of your work and love how you keep recreating your own self. Well, thank you. I am honored to have you. So this is going to be a fun podcast today. So for my listeners, what I'm going to do is just give you an overview of how Rainy and I met, or Rainy and I met, and um, a little bit about her that she told me in her bio. And then I'm going to turn it over to Rainy to tell you the real story. <laughs> okay. So as I said, I've got Rani Levy with me today, and she is the founder and president of Kids First. It's an organization supporting the creatives of tomorrow. And I love uh, this endeavor that she's got, this uh, child Kids First kind of program, because after all, the children are our future. The, the way we give them opportunities, help them start to see Hello self, who they are through their talents and the opportunities they have. And one of the things that I know is very true about what uh, Rani is doing is my grandson said one time uh, what he wanted for Christmas. And I said, Gavin, I don't buy toys. Your other grandma can do that. I want to do something that is an educational kind of piece. I suggested to him to write a book. He was six years old. And I said, I'll help you. And so he sat down on the floor and started playing with his toys. And he said, Mom, Pat, what are the questions? So I asked him three questions about different subjects. And at six years old, Gavin became a published author. Gavin's World is his book. So this is why I'm so, I believe so much in what Rani is doing um, with these young people, because all they need is the opportunity to see who they are and try it out. So just a little bit more from my perspective, I met Rani through Women in Film and Television when she visited here in Nashville, Tennessee. I realized that she is a woman who continues to say hello self to herself and follows her own path and keeps exploring new paths. So one of the things that I'd like to share about her is that um, her children, uh, as I said, are our future. And it's critical that they have opportunities to explore their interests and talents in a quality way. I'm specifically interested in Kids First, and I know you will once you hear the story from her. Kids First is um, children through the age, uh, uh, the age of 9 to 22. And she wants them to have opportunities, which they do, to attend press screenings. Listen to this, all of this. Red carpet events, press junkets, because her work is in um, film and media and television and uh, critical thinking about films that are right for certain ages. They go to site visits. Kid First produces a weekly radio show and a children's film festival. 
Now, just a little bit about Rani. She graduated from the university in Michigan, but listen to this. She started out in engineering, which her father was an engineer too, but she said it was just a little bit too boring. So she switched to dance, ballet, jazz, and modern. Started a dance school. These are just some of the things that she's done. These are things that you can do too. Listen to her inspiration as she shares it. She started a dance school in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now I'm from Indiana and I didn't even know that, <laughs> but I'm learning. This is how it is when we start to listen to the stories. As I was telling Rani a while ago, I believe that in every story, there are many gifts and lots of glories. Rani's been married three times and guess what? Still open to love. She's a mother and a grandmother. She was even at one point in her life asked to work at CNN in the early 80s, but instead she moved to New Mexico, the land of enchantment. And she said, I've been enchanted ever since. Podcasters, listen now as I turn this over to Rainy Levy, Rainy Levy to give you her side of the story and maybe some things that she's focusing on for the future. Okay, Rani, it's your turn now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your story. Wow, that was a, a trip down memory lane there. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at you with your beret, and I have a beautiful new beret my son just gave me for Christmas. That's bright blue. It matches my car. I wasn't even oh thinking to put that on today. <laughs> Same color as your car. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I well, I had it on the other day, and a girlfriend of mine said, "Oh my gosh, your your um uh your hat matches your car." So <laughs> you know what? I think it's funny that you would bring that up because I have a relate. My car's name Fancy, and I have a relationship with her. A relationship, and we talk. Thank you for getting me there safe and sound, Fancy. Yeah, yeah you're the prettiest car. So I love the blue beret because that just shows that you're honoring her. You know, I think it's important that um, that we don't look at the um, electronics around us. I'm counting our cars in that because now we talk to our cars, you know, ask them how to get places. Um, our computers and our phones and Alexa and everything. I think it's important that we don't treat them like slaves and be too demanding. I was just watching a film yesterday that was about that, made by a woman from the Bay Area who um, said she's distressed at how um, electronics have come into our life in such a way that we, Alexa, stop that now, you know, that we have this kind of demanding relationship with them uh, and I really resonated with that because I found myself doing that I replicating what other people were doing when I first got my Alexa in my house which I love and now I always thank her when she finds the yes. right music for me or um tells me what temperature it is or times my um baking or something uh i think it's important um and, and i am going someplace with this <laughs> no 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 i don't even care this is great <laughs> our <laughs> listeners love it <laughs> well i think it's important that we have a certain amount of kindness in our life and you asked me what motivated me to start the Kids First program. Uh, and, it's, and it's really about that. It was really an opportunity to give children a platform to have a voice. Now, the platform is a voice in terms of children's media. And that's kind of our takeoff place. But it often expands into other areas as well. I mean, our main thing that we do is we review all the 
newest films or digital media coming down the pike, whether it's played on a streaming platform or playing in your theaters or, you know, today everything's morphed so much that it's not separate like it was when we first started this um, initiative. Um, so giving them a voice is a really important part of what we do I think they're often not really listened to by adults. Um, even in our schools, we often are not teaching children to be um, critical um, thinkers, critical viewers when they're watching media. Instead, we're, we've, our educational system has gotten so much to be regurgitating, you know, regurgitating facts and, and, um, and not I think when, you're right. We try to tell them what to think instead of allow, yes, instead of allowing them, yeah. Exactly. Um, and it's easier for teachers to be able to go through and say wrong, right, wrong, right, right, you know, than to really get into it. Um, I, I was telling you earlier about, I read a quote the other day, and I can't remember who it was from. I think it was from Einstein, but don't don't count on that. That said something about learning is what remains after you close the books, after you leave school. And learning is really a constantly ongoing experience. And I think that's one of the things that we encourage the kids that we work with to do um, for me, my own own children, when they were at the university and they were so distressed about what should I major in, I said, it doesn't matter. Yes. 80% of people never pursue a career in what they majored in. So just choose something that interests you right now, dive into it, learn as much as you can, and finish. You know, Rani, I want to tell you a um, quick story that I personally experienced in corporate America. Uh -huh. I, um, I was a manager and I decided I wanted to go into consulting and coaching. Uh -huh. And so I thought it was so different. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, I, I've got to get some skills to do this. So I got a job in consulting and going to the other entities. As I entered that job, I said to myself, oh my gosh, I learned all this through rearing my son. So <laughs> you're right about school and all of this stuff that we think is important. The real issue is the experience like you're giving these children. Right. Yeah, it is. I think it really is. Um, the other important thing for me is uh, I really do say, I mean, you said uh, earlier, uh, kids are our future. And it's kind of a, a, a thing that's, you could call it trite or a cliche, but it's true. It really is true. And, and I've always felt that if you really want to make a change in the world or changes in the world, you need to educate children. And that's kind of what drove me into doing what I do. I started teaching children when I was a child myself, when I was in high school, I, I was a dancer. I had already studied every form of dance imaginable. And I was invited to teach a Head Start class. Um, and that was when Head Start first yeah. started, you know. I learned so much from teaching that class. I mean, you know from being a coach or a teacher that there's nothing like trying to teach somebody else to do it that makes you understand how much you know or don't know about whatever you're yeah. doing. I remember going into a class and I had this idea we were going to do this kind of little version of a, of a folk dance and I took with me a bunch of little stickers, right? I was gonna stick all the stickers on the right foot so they knew which foot was their right foot so they could start in the right foot. So I went around the room, I had like 20 kids in the room, went around, put stickers on and then I turn around and I'm ready to have them start in the right foot. They had all moved their stickers everywhere else. <laughs> their stickers were on their arms and their forehead. <laughs> what do you know? What do you know, teacher? <laughs> oh. hmm, let's see. That didn't work well, did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> but you know, um, really these young creatives that we work with, I mean, I think you've heard the term indigo children was used, what, a couple of decades ago, um, at referring to these kids who grew up in um, a culture of increased awareness of the world around them. And I don't know that I would call these kids indigo kids, but I think they've gone beyond that. They really mm. are um, so much more aware of the world around them than you and I were when we were Absolutely. growing up. Our world was much smaller, much more contained. Nothing, not saying that there's anything no. wrong with that, you know? No. Uh, but these kids are so much more aware of the entire world around them, and they have great concerns about um, what's going to happen in the future. I mean, we worked on a project last year about climate change, and we have 65 reporters with Kids First today, and they're between the ages of 9 and 21. Um our older kids, our, our kids don't want to leave. So as they get older, we have them start mentoring the younger kids. So we went to the entire team, all 65 of them, and said, who wants to work on this project about climate change? Every single one of them did. Much to my surprise, because, I mean, we often have things that we're working on that I'll send out to the whole team. And, you know, I'll get six or seven that want to do it, but not every one of them. And I went back to our partner and said, you know, I'm not sure what we're going to do. And they said, well, let's talk to them all. So we did. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but, you know, they're very concerned about the future of the planet. They're very concerned and disappointed that adults haven't done more about it. I mean, you know, you and I are disappointed. We, we knew that climate change was an issue in the 60s when Jacques Cousteau was reporting on um, the wonderful world of Disney, right? He had that marvelous show. I can't remember the name of it now that was from the oceans. And he was concerned about, you know, well, what was happening in terms of the environment. So these kids are, are very aware and Another thing that I think is marvelous about them is they're very kind. Now, kindness, I think, is very much underrated um, in our culture and in the business world as well. In the past, it's been so cutthroat and competitive in terms of getting ahead, but I saw this particularly during the pandemic when everybody was working from home. And um, we, I mean, we had our, our largest boot camps ever. We went from doing in-person live boot camps, which we used to do, oh, we've done all over the country. We've done them on the Disney lot in Burbank, on the Paramount lot, at the Discovery Channel headquarters in um, Washington, D.C., we've done them. Um, oh, we had a great partner, HITN, out of Brooklyn, where we've done several boot camps in the summer. But uh, we were planning to go to Temple University in 2020 in the summer. And then, of course, the pandemic came. And we just said, well, we'll switch to doing it online. And we got 30 kids signed up in a week. Amazing. I mean, Normally, we have like 10, 15 at a time. This was triple. What, I mean, we had to cut it off because we didn't, we, we have a certain student to teacher ratio that we keep. So we had to divide that group into two. But um, that's when I really started to realize, I think, how kind they are underneath everything else. And when one kid, is not doing so well the rest of them kind of come along to shore them up um it's not competitive you know it's not like ha 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 i can do this and they can't so i'm going to be better it's like they want to move the whole team forward and that that brings tears to my eyes you it know does to me too it does I love to see that happen. It doesn't always happen, and it hasn't happened in 
my adult world, working world, which you know, has- Rainey, um, I went, uh, Rainey, I went across the street the other day. I told this uh, grandma and grandpa that I had a little gift for their grandson. Uh -huh. And when he was there, I didn't want to give it to them to give to him. I wanted to give it. Yeah. So I went over there to give it. Now he's three years old, just turned three. And I took him a puzzle. It was an elephant puzzle. And it had numbers on one side of the pieces and ABCs on the other, because I'm all about learning. Uh -huh. But anyway, I was blown to support what you're saying about these children. He, we sat down on the floor because I wanted to help him put the puzzle together. We sat down on the floor and he looked up at me and said, thank you, three years old. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we forget about those kind things or those kind remarks or, but three years old, he was appreciative. And you are so right. These children, um, they're not competitive. They want to help. They're appreciative for what they get. And I looked at his grandparents and I said, did you hear what he just said? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we we give them bad press a lot that the children of today are oh out of control. And you know what I mean? All, But Rainy, they are not. Well, you know, you know, it hits the press. If it bleeds, it leads. So yeah, that's exactly that's it. Very unfortunate. I think, um, and, and, and I mean, we have the same experience with, with our film critics, the kids that join us. And let me put a plug in here for people who are listening. If you have a child between the ages of nine and 16 who loves media, film, digital media, loves to talk about it, likes to be online. All these kids are, you know, online and creating TikTok videos and whatever. Uh, we are always looking for new reporters to join our team. So go to our website and check it out. Uh, our next deadline, I can't remember when it is. It's coming up pretty soon. But we'll, but have, your, we'll have that website on uh, our uh, podcast. Yeah. So what I was going to say, though, is so one of the things that the children do that are on our reporting team is they get to interview the celebrities who work on the movies that we're reviewing. Um, oftentimes, it, it will be, you know, lesser known celebrities. They like, they love to talk to kids their own age. Yeah. And those are not your A-list celebrities as a rule, but you know what? It's important to them to hear from those children and to let them have their stories told. But we also do interview A-list celebrities as well. I mean, it, and, we're- And Rani, you know what? Um, at that moment, they feel like A-list kind of uh, celebrities. Oh, yeah. And that is the key is to give them the opportunity to feel who they are in that moment. And it can it can cause them to leap into something they would have been afraid to do before. So yeah. they become a list in that moment, I think. I love that idea. Right, and um, they, they write their own scripts. They come up with their own question. I mean, we train them, don't ask. It's funny, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day who just retired from teaching filmmaking at USC. And, um, and she's a specialist in documentaries. So uh -huh. she was very interested in how we train the kids. And she said, so do you teach them um, to, to ask, uh, not to ask personal questions? And I said, oh yeah, that's definitely part of our training, you know? So, oh, so I hear you're getting divorced. How's that going? No, you'll never hear that from our kids, you know, or anything personal. Um, we teach them to always, ask questions that are relative to the film that they're there talking about uh, because that's what people want to know is exactly. working on you know talking to tom hanks about a man named otto you know oh, wow you don't want to talk about other things that he's done or what he's going to do next you want to talk about that film that he's there right now and the celebrities get that and i have and, you know, we work with all kinds of PR people, but I have a couple of people who I, I love, 
um, one who I've known for, we've worked together for almost 30 years back to when she was at Disney and then at Fox and she's been everywhere. And she'll always call me or text me and say, that was such a great interview. I can't believe it. They, you know, the director was just raving about the kids afterwards. And, and I always pass those notes on to the kids and their parents. So you know that they've been appreciated. Yeah. Everybody wants to be appreciated. And that feedback to them makes them feel like uh, they're a celebrity too. So yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You're it a does. door opener. Do you know that to the youth of today? Not <laughs> only the youth, Rani, you're the door opener to adults appreciating the youth and the intelligence and the critical thinking of them. And we need more door openers like that um, because it's well, it all yeah. important for adults to appreciate this because because you're right, they often get a bad rap and you know sometimes you'll you'll see them uh, you know a group of kids in a restaurant or something they're all on their phones and people go well they're not even communicating with each other you know what they might be talking to a friend about a homework assignment i mean you really don't know what it is that they're doing so making assumptions i think is not the best thing right. to do people often ask me parents grandparents will say well how do you get these kids to talk to you about this i mean good point a, a, a very good friend of mine his his daughter i used to take his daughter's children to the movies and then we would talk about them afterwards you know all the way home or we'd go to dinner or something and then and she was a teacher and one day she said to me how do you get them to talk to you about the movies and i'm thinking she's a teacher and she's asking me that and i said you know my rules are this. First of all, listen to them. Mm -hmm. Ask them questions and listen to their answers. Sometimes yeah. parents get so involved in everything else they're doing and what's going to happen next that they forget to complete what it is that they just did. You know, you go to the movies with your kid, you leave. That's the time to talk to it to your child on the way home about anything that comes up in the in the movie that's that's worth talking about you know i mean one of the things that we ask is what's the message of the mu movie you know movies are storytelling stories have messages what did you learn from that what did you take away from that what might you share with somebody else yes and what's the one line that really stood out for you? I, I reached down just to get something that you said in your bio to me because I thought it fit here. You said, don't worry that children never listen to you. Well, it was a quote that you put out. Worry mm -hmm. that they're always watching you, Robert right. Fulgham. And I thought that was so true because they are being educated by how we behave. You know what? Exactly. Exactly. It's not what you say, it's what you do That's that exactly. really matters. And sometimes that isn't exactly in sync with each oh, other. Yeah. So um, you are who you are. I'm not saying to be somebody different than who you are, but no. you have to ask yourself, are you putting your best person out there for your child? Well, you know, I think it's interesting because uh, this podcast and the book I wrote, Hello Self, is really about your awareness of yourself, getting mm -hmm. to know who you are. And so yeah. if you can look at that, then it's going to help you with some of this kind of things that you're talking about that you're trying to, because people can look at themselves if they're aware and say, I know where he got that, or I know, or yeah. Uh, they just never do anything. Well, how often do you talk to them? Yes. So I think this, that's exactly, it's waking up a society, not just children, but waking up a society of parents, school teachers, media. <laughs> that's what I love about what you're doing. And that's what Hello Self is intended to do. Yeah, yeah. So, Rainy, I know that you've got other commitments that you're going to have to go to, but 
I wanted to say something. If you don't think that what Rainey is doing is important to these children, look at that collage behind her on the wall. <laughs> these are thank yous from children. These are thank yous from parents. These are thank yous from celebrities. Uh, so it's making a difference. And that is what each of us should look at is how can I make a difference in the future of anybody that we come in contact with. And I know you've made a difference in myself, much more aware. I've got grandchildren too, and children across the street and whatever. So it's made me more aware. What are you doing, Patricia, that encourages them and, and also adults, because adults are really just children in big bodies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes they are. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, the one last thought uh, I'll, I'll share with you is, is we're meeting with a group recently that wants to do a study um, with our alumni, kids that have been through our program, because we started, well, Kids First is 32 years old this year, but we started the Film Critics Program in 2011. So that's a younger program. We always had kids involved, but in 2011, we decided to really put them front and center wow. with us. And so they want to see how kids... Have, who have come through our system have been affected and how that's affected them with their um, college education, their young adult yeah. life. Because we have a number of kids. And it's funny because they said, hey, you know, are you in touch with your alumni at all? And I was at the meeting with three of my board members and we were having dinner that night with three of our alumni in New York City and all of whom are very successful adult young adults in the entertainment business now and we all kind of giggled about that and said well as a matter of fact we're having dinner tonight um but these children uh it's so inspiring to see what they're doing one just got hired as a reporter with nbc news in manhattan the other is working with a big animation company i can't say the name of the company right now um and the other one is doing market research for a media company so meeting with those kids and hearing how their experience with kids first affected them helped them decide what they were going to study in college because they weren't completely focused on the entertainment business before they got involved with us and that pushed them in that direction. Um, that, that was the takeaway that made me go, yeah, okay. That's so important because, you know, when they go to college, when young people go off to college, so many people say, well, what are you going to major in? And you're a prime example of mm -hmm. somebody that was going down one path. And then you became aware, hello, self, this doesn't feel right to me. Hello, right. self, what does feel right? And so what you've, you're helping these young children do is really a process of your own living Um in exploring life and honoring, if I might say, honoring yourself as you see when it doesn't fit. And I think that's one, just like these young people, they may go in a certain, and maybe not all of them stay in the, the media, but oh, critical, yeah. critical thinking goes every place. Absolutely, it does, yeah. So, what um okay big, just so we can wrap this up so you can get to your next meeting um what are some things uh ranny that you have planned for the future or that uh two key takeaways that you would say if you're interested in something like this or anything you would say to parents or to school teachers just any words of wisdom and then maybe your future and where we can get a hold of you Absolutely. Well, as I said earlier, if you have a young person, a child, grandchild, a student that's interested in the entertainment business that 
would love to talk about films, would love to interview celebrities. We're always looking for new reporters. Cool. Send them our way. Um, we do, you know, very focused training with them. It's a six week class to get started, but with every assignment, they always are coached both by our writing editors and our video editors. So we don't expect anybody to get it right out of the box, you know, but um, it's amazing how talented these children are and how far they will go in a short period of, of time. Um, also, we do. We, we didn't even talk about our Kids First Film Festival, but we curate a collection of films from student and independent filmmakers and some studio films from all around the world. And those are available um, to venues that partner with us, and we can provide you a whole collection of programming for your youth and family programming. We... <coughs> But intended to do a festival, as you recall, back in, um, gosh, when was it? When was I in Nashville? Was, was that? 2021 or 2020? It was 2021. No, yeah, it wasn't. I think you're right. I yeah. know. <laughs> and what happened? I think board members got sick and I don't know. It didn't happen. So hopefully we'll, we'll get that back on. Yes. Back. We would love to come back to Nashville. Um but, you know, people, uh, we, we work with venues all over the world. It's kind of easy peasy. Um, we're also involved with um, an international organization actually based in Ukraine, where we're helping them put together um, a speakers bureau of people who are talking about innovations in education and um, continued learning. So, oh my goodness, it's just worldwide, isn't it? That you're touching out there, that you're branching out. Well, I I think that that is the um, I think that's the nature of the world today. I mean, when you put something out online, um, anybody anywhere can. That's right. Or in a country that doesn't allow it, of course. But um, you know, I mean, we get more and more submissions from filmmakers from countries that I've never even heard of before. You know, I mean, I may be exaggerating that slightly, but, you no, know. but you've heard very little about, yes. Very little about, yeah, from Latvia and Ukraine. I mean, we got a bunch of films in, from Ukraine this year, and it's amazing to me what these people are putting out there, beautiful, beautiful films and great stories that and everybody has a story you're right if it's a country yeah. if it's an individual you're so right and they all have a lesson in them that is very important for the yeah. world not yeah. just for that this, that area but for the world yeah oh my gosh i am so excited about what you're doing what would you say to parents that's one other thing that i'm very interested in of children that have an interest in this, what would you say to parents? Well, like I said earlier, listen to them. Um, and uh, al allow them to pursue their own dreams. Oftentimes parents try to put their own initiative yes. on the children that doesn't usually work out so well. Not always. Sometimes it, it's it's a fit, um, and and let them explore different things. Mm -hmm. uh, like we talked about, not everybody goes to college and decides to major in engineering, like I did, and then they get there and they go, "Hmm, mm, this is not it." <laughs> you know, I, I I think it. What you're saying is right on. There is a parent that I know, I'm not going to mention any names, but she has a son, he's 14 years old, and mm -hmm. he was so interested in film and podcasting and media in general. He went to the basement and started his own and created films, he's 14. And then he said, I'd like to be a member of Women in Film and Television. And his parent, his mom, 
supported him, and now he's a junior member of Women in Film in Nashville. So there's a whole bunch of ways that you can step in softly and right. if that is just a fantasy or if it's something they really, really have. So I love what you're doing. And yes, women in film and television here want to support any way that we can. And I know we can do some things on the local level too. So that's interesting. I didn't know that women in film would uh, accept a young boy into their fold. Yes. And we have a, a male who is now on the advisory. It's not one of the board members, but it's advisory uh, uh -huh. position because he and his partner are in the film world and uh, they get money and funding for film. So they're great advisors for our uh, board. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. We're trying to, and I think this goes right at what you're talking about. We're trying to uh, give opportunities in organizations, even though it's a women's organization, is to look at a lot of different angles. And I think children is one. Men are is one because they have ways that um, can open doors for us through businesses or what. So I think we're gradually um, opening to a broader perspective of who we are and how we can impact the world through film and documentaries and things like that. So we're all growing and learning. And that's why I love what you're doing. It's just, it, it's future now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for um, reaching out to me. This has been very uh, inspiring for me. And I always love talking with you. Well, thank you. It is. Oh, I'm so excited that we could work this out. And I to our listeners out there, Rainy can be reached at Kids First. And we'll have that pot, that link on our podcast. And reach out. If you have children or you know of children, reach out to that organization and get them involved. And my trust, my hope today, and my knowing is that you have heard some things that not only excite you about children, but maybe your own life. Because it is time to get those dreams off of that someday shelf and start living your life now. This is Patricia Leonard, your host from Hello Self Podcast. See you and next time. Yes. Did you kidsfirst.org because we are a nonprofit. Okay, a nonprofit kidsfirst.org. And that link will be on the podcast when we uh, put it out there. So thank you so much. And I am so excited to bring you more stories. And don't forget this last thing I always like to say, keep dreaming. That's what keeps us alive in life. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this. Keep dreaming.